Do you own or operate a rain dial controller and need some help programming it or operating it? In this video, I'll show you how to do that and offer you a free download to help you with your programming. Did you purchase your rain dial timer through my resources site? If you did, thank you. And let me know in the comment section below. Okay, it's time to show you how to program it. I've created a free download that can help you with the programming procedure. Just click on the link below. Thanks to my client and neighbor John for allowing me to film this segment at his home using one of the timers I installed for him a couple years ago. There are only three main things you normally need to consider when programming. What time to start the watering. How long each station or zone should water. And how often to water. The station run times is over here. So we've got stations one through six, or you might call them zones one through six. Over here we have the frequency. So we have the days of the week over here that you want to water. And down here we have the start times. Over here we have programs A, B, and C. And I'll get to that in a little bit. To make any changes, you just use the plus or minus buttons over here and you'll see the changes displayed here. You have your switch here at the bottom. It's either in the off position all the way to the left. All the way to the right is run or when you're going to run the station or program manually all the way to the right. If you're going to make any changes, you have to have it here in the center where this little line is. That's for setting the programs. And we'll get to these here in a moment as well. So the first thing we want to do is we, we will have this switch here in the middle. We want to make sure that the time of day is correct. Pretty close, but we're gonna we're gonna bring it to the actual time, and it's 2:20 right now. So I just set it for 2:20, and today is Friday. So we turn it to where it says today, and if you need to change that, you just use the plus or minus button to make the change. We're gonna start with station one, and we see here by the card here that station one is the front parkway, station two is the front main lawn, and station three is the front beds. So on station one, we see that it's set for five minutes. If we need to change that to say 10 minutes, then we just use the plus button and change it to 10 minutes. But we're gonna put it back to where he had it. So then you go to station two and you do the same thing. Station three, station four is actually nothing. We're gonna actually zero this out to where it says off. Same thing with these. There's no need for these to be on. It doesn't hurt anything, but why have it running through these when they don't even do anything? Now we wanna set what days of the week it's gonna run. That's why it's important to have the day set correctly. So here we have Sunday and we see he has it set on. Monday's off, Tuesday's off, Wednesday's on. So Sunday, Wednesday, Friday are the days he has set. If we want to make a change to that, we just hit the plus button and now it's on. Minus button, it's back off. It's that easy. I avoid using the skip day function because with it you'll never know what day of the week the sprinklers are actually going to come on. I always like knowing exactly what days they're going to come on so you can plan things. On your start times, he has that set for 9 p.m. Again, same thing. If you want to make a change to that, you just use the minus button, plus button, whatever and get it set the way you want. If you need a second start time or a third start time. Okay. Uh, the programs over here, what this is for is 
say you want to run your lawns three times a week and your flower beds only need to run two times a week. Well, you can set your lawns on program A. You can program your beds to be on program B. And then you can do whatever program C as well. Sometimes if I'm only using A and or B, I can use the program C for a test cycle. I'll just set each of these stations for a couple minutes and then whenever I want to run through and do a testing, I can just hit the uh, semi-automatic button here and it'll run through each of the stations on program C for two minutes and it'll give me time to walk around and see what's going on. But in most cases, just to keep it simple, I, I highly advise folks just to keep it everything on program A if you can help it. I know in extreme situations like when you're in a hot area, a lot of times you'll want to be more specific about how often things are running. But in this moderate climate that we have here on the coast, uh, most people just have all their stuff on program A. All right, let's say you want to run station one for a few minutes. Maybe you just put some fertilizer on or it's an extra hot day and you just want to uh, give it an extra watering or you need to do an inspection or repair. You just turn it to whatever station you want. Let's say station one. Make sure that your switch is flipped over here to manual. You got to tell it how many minutes you want it to run. And then hit the manual button. And you're good to go. And you just, if you need to turn it off just before it's finished, just hit off. Now let's say that you want to run the entire cycle because it's an extra hot day and you want to get everything in, uh, an extra watering leave this in the current time position up here and then just hit semi-automatic make sure you've got it on the program that you want hit that and now it starts with station one you can see it displayed right there and then it'll sequentially go through every station that's programmed on pro on that program and shut off so you can you can walk away and go about your business One of the nice things about the rain dial is it has this nice terminal strip here and it makes it easy for doing diagnostics with. The other timers like the Ratios or Orbit or some of those other timers, they have clips in them instead and you cannot put your diagnostics tools on those and get any kind of readings. Here we have our backup battery. And I like putting the date on here this is the month and the year that this battery was installed that way you know it's always a good practice to go ahead and change these once a year to make sure that this battery doesn't go dead on you this is just a backup battery the timer does not run off of this battery this just holds your program when the power goes out and by the way if you're curious about when the timer was made Here's your date code right here. This was made September 1st, 19, <laughs> September 1st, 2020. Here's a fuse in here. You probably will never need to change that. These are pretty robust these days, but there is a fuse in here and you got to make sure you put the right fuse in there if, if that blows. It's also a good idea to make sure when you install these that you do something like I did here in that this is all a sealed situation here. This is a conduit going down over to the valves. And the sprinkler valves are under that cover there. Make sure that when you're done using your timer that you have it in the run position. Decide whether you want it off or on. And make sure that this is latched closed because if this pops open from the wind, um, the rain can ruin this timer. I've seen these completely ruined from rain getting in them. It ruins the electronics in it. If you need 
some instructions on how to program this or to run it. The instructions are on the card right here. This just flips over. That's Velcro on there. Just sticks inside the door. Do you have any questions about the rain dial timer? Let me know in the comment section below. And remember the free download that can help you with your irrigation programming. What's the date code of your rain dial? Is yours one of the original ones or one of the new blue ones? Thanks for watching. See you next time.